Before the video starts, I just want to say there's some really important stuff here, some major changes to the legality of things with engineering notebooks and what is legal to do on your robot. So make sure you like stick around and pay attention to this and share this with your sister teams so that they don't miss out. Because like you could easily get yourself in massive trouble if you do not pay attention to these new rules. Hello, this is Evan Rogerson, and I'm Motor Gang here. And today we have a very important thing just happened. Uh, the GDC updated the Q&A with a question from themselves. So they don't do this very often. I think the last time they did it was like a game manual, not a game manual, update a Q&A during over under about match loading. But this one is specifically related to G4, which is the student centered rule. Uh, this is the version of the game manual uh, 2.0, which they did say was going to be slightly changed in the October 9th update. I think that's the 2.1. But it used to be basically the like, work must represent the skill level of the team and they've kind of broken this up into two rules and really clarified some stuff if you've been watching my channel for a while you might think that i'm just like a gdc hater that hates everything the gdc does but like honestly this is a really good rule change and i am super hyped about this and i'm really looking forward to see how it goes out so like honestly gdc cooked with this one i probably would have liked a couple more specific examples but like honestly they still absolutely cooked with this so good stuff and a lot of things have changed with this. So the first thing here is GDC is acknowledging that like, hey, they haven't done a very good job of keeping up with student centered, which I think most people probably know of at least one team in their region or nearby that definitely is mentor built or cheats or something of the sort. So good acknowledging that there are issues here. So GDC is basically gonna go through and they're gonna like clarify some stuff here and update it in the rule. And these changes are effective immediately, which is quite hype, especially for the Nebraska Signature event that is coming up in like two days from now, which is, I'm looking forward to that. I'll be there judging. So make sure you swing by and get some stickers if you see me there. And yeah, they're actually saying they're going to try and enforce these rules. And then, yeah, they have a form for like submitting suspect violations, which there was something like this before, but I think they've cleaned it up a little bit to make it a little bit clearer on what's actually going on. So I think this is being cleaned up and I think it's better now than what it was before. So let's go ahead and get into the details of what the rules have changed. So basically G4 got a full rewrite. So let's kind of go through, we'll start off with point A. They still kept the thing about skill level of the team, but they definitely clarified some stuff. So you should not copy robots or mechanisms um, that are provided by other teams. So this includes, but is not limited to, so these things are explicitly legal use of instructions, pictures and videos, notebooks, CAD designs, and any other documentation that would be useful. And it doesn't matter if this is provided by somebody who's not a student, like an adult, or somebody is a student that's on another team. So you cannot, like, you can still reference and look at these things, but you can't copy things off of instructions, pictures, videos, notebooks, CAD, or anything else like that. So this really cuts down on like, it is illegal to whole count somebody's stuff. So you can't just like, I've seen plenty of pictures of teams on Discord pulling up the YouTube video and going like frame by frame of some team that did really well and like copying screw for screw what the team did to try and build that robot. This is no longer allowed. Um, additionally, following instructions is also not allowed. So like some of my videos that were legal last year to reference, technically aren't legal for teams to copy anymore. I mean, you can still use them as a reference, as a jumping point. Uh, like the 333 RPM video, you probably shouldn't be building 333 RPM anyways. The next up is, yeah, so you can be inspired by these teams and like have them spark innovation, but you also need to document and demonstrate this in your engineering notebook alongside evidence of the iteration. So basically, if you're going through and making changes to something, this now needs to be documented in your engineering notebook. I know there are lots of teams that do really well at the competition aspect, but just don't care about the notebook. That's really going to come back to bite you here with this new rule here. And as somebody who's big on notebooking, of course, I really like this. Teams are required to present this evidence, i.e. the engineering notebook, if asked to do so by a robot inspector, head referee, event partner, or judge. Now, interestingly enough, these are not high level positions like judge and robot inspector can basically just be anyone. And you can be asked to show off these things in your engineering notebook to any of them. So that's quite interesting as 
if the inspector thinks that there are issues on your robot, you can now be forced to have to pull up the documentation in your notebook to show them. This is already kind of something we had for VexU because for VexU, you like, can do a lot more custom stuff and you need to show that you did it. But I think this is really good change for VRC and really having to lock in on notebook. And then using another team's design as like a starting point, so like taking inspiration from something is fine as long as you have evidence that you iterated or innovate and modified it so that it's your own. Um, so like if you're taking inspiration from something, but you're still making at least some changes, that's still fine. Uh, it's pure one-to-one -one hole counting though is not allowed. And then again, you should have that documentation to show how it was clearly changed. And yes, it should not be an exact copy of any other original design. So I think again, really good. And if you cannot demonstrate these things, it's automatically a violation. So even if you do not whole count somebody else, but you don't have it in your notebook and somebody thinks that you did whole count somebody, if you don't have your notebook and you can't prove that you didn't do it, then it's a violation. So this is basically changing it from a innocent until proven guilty to now you are guilty until proven innocent, which I actually think is a really good thing here because Things have gotten out of hand in the past, so I think cracking down like this is really going to help things out. And after all, you should be documenting these things in your note engineering notebook anyways, and if you have them documented, then this isn't going to be an issue at all. The hero bot is still allowed, so anything from Vex, the annual hero bot, is still allowed to, you can copy that whole for whole, whole counting it. That's a good entry point for teams. And really, I don't have any problems with this because you're going to beat these teams anyway, or if you're losing to a hero bot, cope and do better. And yes, they're still encouraging teams to use them only as a starting point, improve them, yada, yada, yada. But again, the hero bot is the only thing that is legal for like instructions step by step. And again, this is kind of a given, but this is within each team. So you can't even whole count your sister teams or do team collaboration within an organization. You have to come up with these as a team. The fact that you're just a number and you share the same number, you're not on the same team. It's basically just administrative to help make things easier for coaches. So again, the big thing here is one-to-one -one hole counting is now illegal and the burden of proof is now on you to make sure that you can prove that you designed your robot. If you do not have this, it is automatically a violation, even if you did design it yourself. The red box is kind of the same thing. Um, You'll always have teams that cheat and publish stuff online, but you, they, RECF can't do everything about these. And I agree, it's fully impossible to stop everybody from doing anything. There's always going to be some level of teams cheating, and they're never going to be able to catch it all. However, hopefully it should be better now because these teams are really going to like get hit with the hammer if it happens. So hopefully that'll discourage it and teams come to realize that the risks of cheating do not outweigh the rewards of cheating, and it's not worth it to cheat. And yes, it's not the intent to punish the students, but like if you're cheating, it's not fair to the other teams, and they're the ones who are getting punished. Fairness in the competition is important. You will be held strictly accountable if you are in violation of these. It's not worth it to cheat. Like, yes, you probably could get away with it, but it sounds like they're really cracking down on this. And anyways, the higher level you go, the more likely to you are to face strict scrutiny. Like, for judging is kind of the obvious example. If you have a mid-first interview, nobody's really going to care. But like, if you have like a stellar first interview and you're like in consideration for top judge awards, you're going to get more scrutiny just because more judges are going to be looking at you trying to compare you to other teams. And if they're giving you more scrutiny, they might find things if you do cheat. So like... Especially when you're actually cheating and being good, you are very likely that you are going to get caught. It's pretty easy to tell as somebody who's judged in the past. And again, the burden of proof is on the teams to provide these resources. Teams need to be able to justify all their design decisions. So justify your design process, your decisions, and demonstrate a full understanding of how the robot operates. You should know how to... This is basic interview stuff, though, anyways. And again, if you cannot... Provide reasonable evidence that the robot is your own work, it's automatically assumed that you cheated. So now, burden of proof is on you. Not having a notebook is very, very bad because you can't prove these things. And yeah, they do state out most event partners aren't going to be able to know, like, 
they're not going to recognize a Ben Lipper robot at a Vex IQ competition. I mean, you're obviously going to have some people that do, but most of them aren't. So it's up to the students to prove that they came up with it and not just be like, oh, well, this is probably unique design because they can't scour all of YouTube to see if you whole counted somebody. It's not reasonable. And this is, yeah, this is kind of how things work in industry. You need to be able to prove that you came up with it. It's not like a, trust me, I'm the first one to do this. That's not how it works. And being able to defend your designs is important. And I definitely agree with this here. And yeah, consequences, you can get disqualified from matches, removed from events, um, and like even get kicked out of the entire program. You can also be removed from judged awards and your robot skills challenge scores removed. So like, don't cheat. The penalties are very harsh going forward, hopefully. And yeah, this will still lead to like a G1 and like a code of conduct investigation. But honestly, all really good changes here, in my opinion. And then G5, they've kind of broken that off into a separate rule. This hasn't really changed, but it's now the whole part about like students can only belong to one team. That's one rule. That's now G5. And all work might present the skill level of the team is now G4. So like the G5 stuff, that's basically that you can't swap teams for just any which way you have to have a specific reason and once you swap teams that should be permanent that hasn't really changed so i'm not going to go over that in too much detail so basically to wrap this up and just have some closing thoughts whole counting one to one is now fully illegal you must provide documentation that you built the robot in like your engineering notebook or something very detailed that is going to be very similar to an engineering notebook and this rules still apply to things like within schools and the burden of proof is now on you to prove that this is your robot design, not just a trust me bro kind of thing. I really like these changes and I'm hyped to see where they go with this going forward. So the bottom line here is don't cheat. And also don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe in order to please the YouTube algorithm.